Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and this is a Town Hall 9 defensive video talking about the Diamondback uh, base. That's what I'm calling it, I guess, due to the air defense placement. The Diamondback Town Hall 9 base. I think right away some of you guys are going to like it, some of you guys are not. But hear me out, I'm going to be talking about the various reasons, um, the benefits, why it's set up this way. Um, not any replays. If you guys want to see some attacks on this, let me know. I have to wait another like uh, 24 hours for the um, the timer to go down so it can cool down and I can FC with it. I'll definitely let some people in Genesis attack it if that's what you guys want to see. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to see some attacks on it. Uh, but this video is going to talk about the benefits of it. And if I can't convince you that it's a, a good base, hopefully I can at least... Uh, uh, bring some light to certain concepts you might have not considered before and I can improve your uh, job as a base builder. Uh, so that all being said, let's go ahead and get right into it, talking about some of the basics and get a little bit specific with each uh, part of the base, each aspect. So the th main thing is that sticks out of these four air defenses, they're all very central. That's why it gets the name the diamond back and because it's kind of like a diamond shape. And I think it, it's good against Lava Hound attacks, like heavily air-based attacks, not a big kill squad, um, you know, three plus Lava Hounds. I think it'll hold up pretty well against those attacks. You can see that on this air defense, there's another two that are covering it. So if a Lava Hound is sitting there, there's three air defenses um, that are going to be targeting it. So I think it's difficult for someone to uh, to just leave those four air defenses alone and try to come at it with a big uh, air heavy attack because they'd have to de deploy their balloons so quickly. I think it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't be worth it, and they're gonna they would have to do more of a kill squad based attack, which I'll get to in a moment. Uh, but yeah, you can see. This one, same thing, uh, covered by three air defenses. If they come for this one first, they have four air defenses, all four um, raining in on whatever Lava Hound is sitting there. Also have the Seeking Air Mines by uh, some very populated areas in terms of air targeting defenses to try to take out some Lava Hounds and uh, kind of make things go quicker. But yeah, um, the idea behind this is you're centralizing your air defenses, but you're putting a lot of your kind of killing, balloon killing defenses, hog killing defenses towards the perimeter. And you can see at the top right here, a lot of wizard towers, archer towers out of range to these air defenses, a lot of traps. Um, same thing a little bit down here, we have some more Teslas, kind of a mini Tesla farm, uh, the wizard tower, and uh, this area is kind of just leaving it for uh, kind of, um, actually a free balloon could probably take that out, might have to change that. Mm, yeah, I might have to move that uh, cannon a little bit because right now a free balloon might grab it. So that's something to keep in mind. But um, besides that, I think that by decentralizing, you're going to make it difficult for someone to send in a, uh, you know, a three golems, CC of bowlers, their heroes. They can come in here. They might have to use a few jumps, multiple jumps, because this is a compact base, very compartmentalized. And because of that, probably going to maybe this angle if they come with wall breakers, that itself will be tricky to wall breaker in right there. Um, but if they can drop a jump right there, I guess they can get all four of these air defenses with one jump. But from there, there's still a lot of base left up. You can see these two are set back from the core because bowlers cannot reach um, over two, wall two tiles after the wall. So the bowlers, if they're in the core right here, would get caught up. They'd need another jump to uh, get any further. Otherwise, they'd have to go through this wall right here. So that's another part of it. Same with this archer tower, kind of set away from this core type compartment. Um, trying to force the attacker to have to use multiple jumps. And even still, we have the Tesla. We have this layer of defenses pretty set back. Just trying to decentralize stuff. You can see the giant bombs very much so to the outside of the base as well. And uh, that's going to try to make it. So if they do come with a heavy kill squad... And instead of using balloons, they try hogs. We have the giant bombs there that won't be triggered by the kill squad. And those will uh, hit the hogs and hopefully do some damage. Same with the spring traps also around the outside between defenses to, uh, to throw off some hogs that are trying to sneak in there and get some perimeter defenses. So I think that covers most of it. The queen is kind of offset over here. And I guess it might be, this side might be a little bit suspect. There is some HP guarding her, but there might be a possibility of a king trade, which could be a little bit concerning. Um, maybe move the king over there to help guard her. 
really uh, the defender's choice. That actually might be a good adjustment even because the king, I don't know how much he'll do over there. So uh, move him here just to prevent a suicide uh, king or something. A little more protection for her. So that might be a good change to make. Might keep that. Um, what else do we have? I guess for the CC troops, I'd recommend Baby Dragon, Valk, and probably the rest archers. That way you have, you know, the Baby Dragon and the archers that can both cover air stuff if there's a mass air attack, which I don't think there'll be. But also the Baby Dragon Valk combo is typically enough to force the ability of the queen, and that can make it difficult if they're doing a queen walk. But I think this base on its own is pretty good against queen walks. You can see these defenses can't be reached. This one uh, that's kind of guarded by the town hall right here. It's a tough base to queen walk and get much value. This expo is also in a good spot to defend. Same with this archer tower can kind of... Uh, Get a few hits on the queen if she comes around that way. Plus the HP is going to make it difficult to do much. The air defenses aren't quite reachable by the queen. So the healers are going to be under siege uh, most likely. So overall I think it's going to be tough to queen walk this base anyway. A standard CC of the baby dragon Valk is probably good. Checking the CC's radius. I think pretty much got it covered. Um, maybe down here might have to do something. Uh, in general, it's a good idea to cover up the CC just because uh, even if they're not going to lure it anyway, you don't want to give them the choice. So I, re I would recommend on most bases having the CC covered. This one doesn't quite. There's probably a few spots you could slip in a hog or something. So some something to think about, I guess, if uh, if that's something you're worried about for your base uh, being being this the CC being lured. Uh, what else do we have to talk about? We got most of the traps taken care of. You can see in terms of air traps, we have the uh, these guys on, on air, the skellies. We have the air bombs kind of in sneaky locations around the outside. Hopefully the lava hounds won't path over. I put them in spots I don't think lava hounds will be pathing over. That way it makes it so they affect the balloons, which is what they should. And these guys, the Seeking Air Mines, will hit the Lava Hounds, which is the way you want it. Have a Troll Tesla. I think at Town Hall 9 it's a good idea, especially if a lot of your clan doesn't use it. They probably won't be expecting it. So it's um, definitely a good idea for certain people in your clan. Don't have everyone do it, of course, but um, just enough so they're a little bit worried about it. And they have to maybe even bring a balloon uh, just for that that can kind of uh, throw them off, especially the first attack, which is what we're trying to defend against mainly. So, like I said, giant bombs on the outside, pretty uh, standard stuff there. Uh, what else we have? The storages, I mean, they're pretty spread out. We're trying to, of course, protect the, ki uh, the queen with these storages. The town hall up here, just to add some more stuff in case they try to... Uh, to do some kind of long queen walk going down here to get all this air targeting stuff taken out. Going to be difficult with the town hall there. Um, and yeah, at the Teslas, keep in mind you want to have your Teslas and your wizard towers, preferably all of them, out of range of these air defenses, which is why I put so many, much stuff, even including these archer towers up on the top here, away from the, uh, from the air defenses. And I put... Uh, these two guys pretty much away. You might have to move this Tesla over a little bit. I'm not sure where you'd move it to, but um, right now it might be able to take. A, it might be able to cover a lava hound, which isn't what you want. So I might even switch places with the mortar here. Um, go up like that. Move the mortar in here, uh, like that, and yeah, something like that. Uh, to, and that's not even covering it, there we go, to uh, to make the Tesla out of range, that's good. Um, taking a look at how people might try to three-star this base, and I'm sure a lot of you guys right now are, t are thinking that, um, how you would at attack this base. I think the main play on this base is going to be a stoned three golem attack, uh, probably with some balloons or some hogs or something for the rest of the base. Which is why, like I said, I tried to decentralize it. You could maybe even argue the cannon should move to the outside along with a few other like of these uh, archer towers in an attempt to spread stuff out, not only for air, but also, like in the case of this cannon, uh, to defend against hogs, just more DPS on the perimeter to, uh, to take out anything that tries to uh, uh, get that outer shell of your base. So that's something to think about as a possible change. Uh, I think I'd say it's likely someone will come from the bottom left here. That way, you don't have to invest as many jumps. But like I said, we have the buffer space right in here to uh, to block out the bowlers from going much farther. And the perimeter of the base is pretty well 
uh, defended, in my opinion. I might even um, move this archer tower a little bit farther out here um, just to, uh, to put in a little bit more blockage on the core there. This way the archer tower um, might be able to uh, target some balloons or some hogs or something and won't get taken out by anything in the core of the base. So I guess that what I'm saying is anything you can do to decentralize this base is typically going to be a good idea. And the air sweepers, pretty good locations. Um, now if they're doing a, a golem based kill squad, those would go down with the air defenses. But um, if they're not, it'll be really tricky with the all the air defense damage plus the air sweepers being an issue. So I think you're forcing the uh, the three golem attack. You can probably play around with the compartments a little bit. If you saw my last base destruction video, you saw how uh, the parallel versus perpendicular compartments were uh, an issue for the first attacker, leading his golems and his bowlers and all different parts of his kill squad to different locations. So maybe even on this base, if you were to modify it, you could play around with the compartments, make it difficult to funnel the troops all into the same location that might be something to uh, think about for improvement. But overall, this is the base, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope this uh, little um, tutorial video type thing helped you guys, uh, base builders. You're free to use this base. It's called the Diamondback. I might make some changes in the future with like a Diamondback 2.0. Uh, but for now, this is the base. And I'm definitely willing to do some friendly challenges on it with the people in Genesis. If that's something you guys want to see, just let me know. So that'll do it, and thank you guys for watching. Be back with another video probably tomorrow, so be looking for that. See you guys then. Bye, Sectatron out.